everybody. Welcome to our Train Your Dog With Me series. In this episode, I am going to show you how to teach your dog, give you eye contact and focus on you, and also how to hand target. We're also going to be talking about socialization with your dog, which includes more than just socializing with other dogs, but people, sound, surfaces, novel stimuli, as well as handling your puppy's body. After the name game, um, we want to teach her to focus, like okay. on us. Uh -huh. So the first thing I'm going to do is again call Loring. Winnie! What do we have? So I'm going to bring this up to my eyes, and right when she looks at me, I'm going to click and treat. Okay. Good job. And again, I haven't named it yet um, because I want to teach it to her first. Mm -hmm. There are some, some behaviors that I do name at the beginning, mm -hmm. but the first few I don't. Okay. So now that she's looking at me, I'm gonna take the treat and move it over here. And I'm gonna wait. Yes. Oh my gosh, she looked away from so me. So that's why I love the clicker because uh -huh. as soon as she looked at me, I clicked. And so I, it's, oh. like, it's like a camera. Yeah. And so I take a picture of that. It's like right when you looked at me, you got the click. That's yeah. what you're getting rewarded for. Okay, so the reward is really the click and then the treat just comes later. Yeah. I mean, right after, but. Yeah, they're both reinforcers. Mm -hmm. So this also teaches her that no matter what distractions are in her environment, if she looks at, yes, if she looks at me, she gets rewarded. So does she just kind of, when you're not moving it, does she just kind of get bored looking at it? Yes. not moving and she's like, okay, forget it. Right. She'll look at me like, why are you not giving this yeah, to yeah, me? Yeah. <laughs> and so why when she looks at me, I click. Okay. So now that I, and when you practice this, you can go high, low, right, left. So now I'm going to name it. Winnie, watch me. Yes. Oh, Good girl. Okay. Good girl. And some people call it focus. Some people call it eyes. You can call it whatever you want as long as everyone in your household is consistent. Okay. Yep. Watch me. Winnie, watch me. Yes. Good girl. Oh, so I noticed that you didn't say watch me again. Yeah. You were like, watch me, watch me. Watch right. Me. Okay, cool. I give her a second. So yeah. now let's say she doesn't do it. Uh -huh. Then I'll just say, okay, we'll try again. She just because, she, yeah, because she's learning. Uh -huh. So I don't ever want her to think she's done something wrong. Yeah. So I don't say like, no, or anything like that. It's like she's still learning. And if you're, if you're teaching her something, so let's say um, that I put this out here and three times in a row she doesn't look at me. Mm -hmm. That means I'm going too fast for her, so I want to back up and go back to the lure okay. and lure her to my eyes. Okay. So you can always go back and make it easier, mm -hmm. but I always want to set her up for success mm -hmm. so that she learns. And we want it to be... I'm going to be writing this down. You'll get handouts. Okay, okay, okay perfect. <laughs> yeah. Winnie, watch me. Yes. Good job. Good girl. Such a good girl. And then during the day, if she... Um, checks in with you or looks at you, mm -hmm. you can reward her for that. Mm -hmm. Like just like, you know. Just randomly. Right. So well, she's, she's always looking at me. Yes. <laughs> she follows me around and just constantly looking yeah. at me. Yeah. Well, there's just. randomly reward her. Yeah. So like right now she was looking over here. Yeah. And then when she looked back at me, I rewarded her. Okay. For like giving me attention. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to distract her again with a treat. Bring. Go find it. Winnie, sit, watch. Yes. Oh my gosh, that was so cute. So we oh, just combined okay. three things. Uh -huh. We did name game, sit, and watch. Okay. And when you start to chain things together, then I click and treat after the last one. Okay. Okay, so let's have you practice. Okay, okay so you have your clicker. I'm gonna give you a handful of treats. So the first thing, I'm going to distract her, and okay. I want you to just call her name. And as soon as she turns to look at you, I want you to click and give her a treat. Okay. And lots of praise. Okay. Winnie, hi. Winnie. Winnie. Yes. Oh, I said it twice. That's yes. okay. That's okay. <laughs> Good girl. Good girl. Girl. Good. And if she doesn't look at you the first time, then make noises. like. Oh, that's right. Okay. Or kissy noises. Okay. Winnie. Hey. Okay, now call her. Yes. Good job. 
I'm, I'm like the worst at this. <laughs> it, it takes, there's a learning curve. Okay. <laughs> but it, it's, it will get like so second nature. Hey, Winnie. What do I have? Hey. Winnie. Winnie. Yes. Yay. Good job. Good girl. Good girl, Winnie. Okay, so let's try the eye contact one. So okay. I want you to take a treat and bring it up to your, kind of between your eyes. And as soon as she looks at you, I want you to click and treat. How do you do, okay, so I'm just using two hands, right? Winnie, Winnie. Yay. Yeah, good job. Good girl, good girl, Winnie. Do it again. Yep. Oh, Winnie. Yay. Good. So this brings up another good topic. Um, dogs don't generalize. So where she learns it with me, whenever you do it with a new person or start in a new again. location, oh. start over. Okay, okay. Um, so and, like just different spots around the house or yep. the backyard? Or something. Yes, okay. yep. And so think about when we're here, learning it right here without distractions. Uh -huh. Think of her being in preschool. Uh -huh. And then if you go in the backyard, um, that's maybe elementary school. In the front yard with cars and people going by, that's middle school. Mm -hmm. Practicing at like Home Depot would be like high school. Okay. okay. So, so we can't expect her to be on a high school level if she's mm -hmm. still in preschool. Okay. So people always say, well, my dog doesn't listen to puppy class or a pet co. And it's like, yeah, because there's so many distractions. And yeah. that's like high that. school, yeah. college level okay. when she's in preschool. Right. And Whenever I start to teach in a new location, I'll, I'll always kind of start over with the lore, mm -hmm. but they pick it up faster. They're like, oh yeah, I know what we're doing now. It just takes a minute. Yep. <laughs> and so with every person in your family that works with her, you want to kind of start over with the lore. Okay. And don't have them name it until she's doing it. Okay. Got it. So now I want you to take the treat and put it out to the side and just okay. wait for her to look at you and then click and treat. Right there. Oh, yes. Good. Good. Good, Good. Good job waiting. Yeah, she was like, and then she goes right past me. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes it's fast. Sometimes dogs will look right at you and then right at the treat. Okay. Like they'll they'll be looking at the treat. They'll look at you, look back. Uh -huh. So that's why. I, that. Yep, and that's why I like the clicker because I click right when they look at me. So okay. the dog is like, okay, it's when I give you eye contact. That's why I'm getting the reward. Okay. Yes, yes, good job. Good job. So if I say watch me here? Yep. Winnie, watch me. Yes, yes. Good, good job. Girl. That was so good. 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 good so you can do this like on walks. Uh -huh. um, I always do what's called training walks. So while we're walking, I'll, I'll practice like focus, you know, watch me mm -hmm. just to get the dog to focus um, on me instead of other things, especially mm -hmm. like if I see a loose dog and I don't know if it's friendly or not yep. or there's a car. You always want the dog to focus on you because then they can listen to what else you ask them to do. Okay. Good. Now let's chain three together. Okay. So I'm going to reset her. I'm going to okay. toss a treat and then I want you to say her name. Okay. Ask her to sit, watch me, and then as soon as she looks at you, click treat. Okay. I hope I don't know. And she might look at you anyway while she's sitting. Mm -hmm. That's totally fine. Okay. Winnie. Go find it. Do I need to wait till she's like coming back to me? Nope, I'd say it now. Winnie. Just... Sit. Watch me. Yay. Yes, good, good job. Girl. Good. Oh. No, it's okay that she's mainly looking at the treat, my hand. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Go find it. And then try the name, sit, and watch again. Winnie. You can show her a treat, get her to kind of come over. Good. Now to... Sit. Watch me. Yay, good. Good, girl. good. Good girl. Uh, do you have any other questions about biting, potty um, training, yeah, so barking? Okay, so potty training. Um, we've got. She, whenever we take her out, she goes. Well, okay. For the most part. Um, we kind of just walk her right down in the backyard. Okay. And she just goes out there, uh, but she still had lots of accidents in the house. It doesn't. Like, okay. I know that's going to happen, so it's not a. We're not like frustrated by it but right does that just kind of slowly stop happening as long as we're good at taking her out or should i be doing something so if when she has an accident 
so because she's she's really young, I would take her out like first thing in the morning. Uh -huh. um, at night, if she's crying to go potty, uh -huh. then then it is okay to let them out okay. um, if they have to potty. Um, after a training session, mm -hmm. after a nap, after a play session, the more active she is, the more she's going to have to go. Okay. So taking her out frequently and then reward as soon as she squats outside, then that's where I'm like, yes, good dog. Okay. The, the reward is actually getting to relieve your bladder yeah. or your bowels, but right. I always give a secondary reward and give a treat okay. and just say good potty. Okay. Now, if she goes in the house and you don't catch her, mm -hmm. then there's nothing you can do. Like old school back in the day, like my mom used to rub our dogs. No, yes, yeah, uh -huh. yes, and we don't want to do that because we don't want her to be fearful of us. And she'll probably be confused, like, why are you doing that? Right. Uh -huh. um, it does take a while for dogs to develop a substrate preference, meaning that she learns, oh, I only go okay. on the grass or I only go here. Uh -huh. And and carpet to a dog feels a lot like grass, mm -hmm. so a lot of times they will go on carpet. Um, so if you don't catch her, there's really nothing you can do but clean it up. Okay. Um, if you do catch her, then I will, and I'm not going to do it as loud as I normally do because uh -huh. I don't want to startle her, but I'll usually go, uh-uh-uh, and just clap my hands. Okay. And it, they then they kind of go like this, and they suck it back up, oh, and then you can immediately you know. take her outside and say, go potty. Okay. okay. And then reward her for going outside. Okay. And if there's a particular place outside that she goes, I would use the same door each time. Uh-huh. We only have the one door. So, okay, so yeah. then she'll learn that, okay, when I go potty, I go to this door and then go outside, and then she'll start to go over to that door okay. and let you know that she needs to go out. Okay, so for our, so our situation is kind of weird because you have to go downstairs inside to get to the backyard. So what do you think of the bell thing? Yeah, I was just going to talk about, so we're going to do hand targeting today, uh -huh. um, which then you can transfer over to using with a bell. Okay. But I love using a bell. Um, we had, so in our situation, we have it hanging at the top of the stairs. Yep. Thinking that when she's like, as she learns it, she'll just go to the top of the stairs and, and ring it. Take her down. Yep. Okay. Yes, exactly. So to teach her that, um, we are going to do hand targeting. So again, I'm going to lure her. So I have a treat, and I'm just putting it in between my fingers. Uh -huh. And I use hand targeting for a lot of things. Yes. So I just lured her to my hand, and as soon as her nose touched my hand, I clicked. Okay. I've had some um, clients use this so well that they use this instead of a recall. They oh. put their hand out and say, because one of the uses is to get a dog to move. Uh-huh. Yes. So as soon as I, you know, she's going for the treat, mm -hmm. but then as soon as I feel her nose, I click and treat. So you're teaching her to come to your hand when it's out. Yep. Okay. And just touch her nose. And then there's different games you can play. Like you can have them target different, you know, your shoes, your other things. But then you're going to put your hand behind the bell. And we're going to eventually call this touch mm -hmm. and say touch. And then she'll touch your hand. It'll ring the bell. Mm -hmm. And then you'll pair that with let's go potty. Oh, okay, cool. So now I'm going to do left hand. Good. Touch. Yes. Okay, so Good girl. Touch. Yeah. Okay. So it's just touch your hand. Okay. And I use this also for leash walking to uh -huh. teach, not that she's going to be a big puller, but yeah. um, you can do touch by right by your side to get them to stay by your side. Okay. You can use it to move them off of furniture, move them away from dangerous things. Mm -hmm. Like there's a lot of uses for hand targeting. So now you can kind of tell that she's getting tired. Yeah. And so I would, that's why you're only going to do like 10 or 15 minutes. Okay. To kind of keep her interested the whole time. Yeah. Because we don't want her to get bored and we don't want her to lose interest. We always want it to be fun. If she does get bored at the end of the session, like, is, would that make her not as excited for the next one? Yeah. Okay. And so what I would do is right now I'm going to ask her to do something easy. Sit. Yes. Okay. All done. And then. Okay. I'm going to always end it on a good note and leave her wanting more, mm -hmm. um, and then we'll give her a break. Okay. Um, we can talk about, what other questions do you have? Okay, so let's talk about crate training. Okay. <laughs> so I probably made all the wrong, all the mistakes in the beginning, so we got her, and I was like, okay, I'm going to put her in a crate from the beginning. She just barked the whole time. She cried in my room, and she just barked and kept us up, and then... We tried her out here, same thing. I think she really likes to be by us. 
Right. Um, and so what I did, and I don't know if this is good or bad, but I took her crate and a bed and her a potty pad, and I just put it in the laundry room and bathroom and just shut all the doors between us. And and also, like, I have kids who are up at 4 a.m. going to school things. Right. And, like, I didn't want her to get woken up in the morning that early. Right. And so I just kind of put her in there and leave her all night. Yeah, that... that's totally fine. Okay. Yep. Um, and then the other time that I crate is, let's say you take her out to go potty and she doesn't go. Uh-huh. And so you know, okay, she hasn't gone potty. I don't want her to have an accident. Dogs are not going to potty where they sleep. Well, what and, if she, she did, though, like in the beginning, the first few nights when I was, like, shutting her in her crate, mm-hmm. she would pee and poo in there. Yeah, so either either she didn't get let out often enough uh-huh. or she just had to, like, re- go really bad, and sometimes it can be a stress thing as yeah, well. Yeah, that's what I kind of thought because I, when the few nights I was keeping her door shut because now I don't shut her in her crate, I just let her, mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, I was wondering if it was a stress thing. So I'd take her potty first, and then I'd put her right in, and she basically cried all night, and so I would take her out like every two and a half hours. But when I would go to get her out, she had already peed in there. Yeah, so so I would go maybe every two hours or every hour and a half. Okay. Mm-hmm. So just take her out more often like before she has to go. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, we always want the crate to be positive, so you can put her in there with a toy, um, with a chew item, mm-hmm. something like that. And... You know, and and dogs are social. They want to be with us. Um, But we want them to also learn how to be separated from us so that they don't develop separation anxiety. Okay. So even, like, with uh, COVID and stuff, a lot of people aren't gone, and their dogs aren't learning how to be by themselves. And that's, that's again, yeah, some of that U-stress. Like, she... Are you saying U, like Y-O-U? It's E-U-S. Oh, okay. E-U-S stress. Okay. So we want her to learn that, okay, my, my people are leaving, but they're going to come back. Mm-hmm. So you could just start her in the crate and, like, walk out of the room and then walk in the room. Mm-hmm. And and then, you know, if she's demand barking, a lot of times as soon as they see you, they'll, they'll stop for a second. So demand barking would, like, would be? Like barking for attention. Okay. Like, look at me, pick me up, let me out. She's in the crate, it's, like, it's so funny and cute, but it's, like, sad barking. It's, like, whoo. And like sometimes it's all hoarse, like I got a two sound. Like, yeah, it's like hoarse, like <gasps> like it's so yeah. Funny. And I would ignore it as much as you can, and then wait for her to take a breath, because because dogs will like whine or they'll bark, bark, yeah. bark, bark, and then right when they take that breath, I'm like, yes, good, quiet, and then I let them out. Okay, okay. So try to let her out when she's quiet. Mm-hmm. Um, but even though you're home, like you know, go for a walk to the corner and back. Go get your mail and back without yeah. her. Uh-huh. So she learns to be alone. Now, what if I have to, like, push her in her crate and shut the door? Like, that's okay? Yeah. It's not. It's yeah. <laughs> um, can we grab her crate yeah. and I'll show you yeah, kind of sure. what I do? That'd be great. Before she falls asleep? Yes. <laughs> like, this is a big day, huh? Probably going to sleep the rest of the day. Like, oh, no, I know that thing. Actually, she probably will. Really? Usually <laughs> after training sessions. Um. Good. So, good girl. So I'm going to leave the door open and let She's her go off. in. She never does this. And come out. Good girl. Good girl, Winnie. Good girl, Winnie. So usually I'll start with a treat like right there. Mm-hmm. And then I'll toss it in a little bit more. And I do this several times before I even close the door. Oh, okay. But I let the dog this is go the in. Every time you're putting her in. Yeah, or, I mean, but eventually, in yeah, in the yeah. beginning. Eventually, you won't have to do this yeah, all the time. Right. She'll just go in. Okay. But I'm gonna let her come out if she wants. Mm-hmm. If she goes all the way in, that's fine too. Oh, good girl. Oh, baby. Good girl. Oh, baby. Show off. So now while she's in there and being calm, I'm gonna treat her. Okay. Because I want her to associate my crate. I love my crate because I'm getting salmon treats yeah. and. And good things are happening could in it be here. Because it's not in that normal place, like that it's right here. Yeah, it, okay. it could be. But you can do the same thing in there. Yeah. Like just toss the treats in, let her come out. Mm-hmm. So I let them go in, come out, go in, come out several times, and then I'll just like okay, close, open. Good girl. Oh, okay. So she's not learning that it's freaking out. Or right. Freak out it. Yep. Is this the right size? Yeah, that's a great size okay. for her. Here, look. So would you practice like leaving her in her crate for a little while, a couple times a day? Yeah. Okay. 
and I'm going to close, open, let her come out. Good girl. girl. Good job. And you really don't have to use the clicker for this. Okay. Yeah, I think I we may be trying to just force it, and that would upset her maybe. I don't know. Yeah, we want um, her to make the decision to go in. Okay. And then eventually you can name this and say, go to your crate or go to your bed or whatever you want to name it. Mm -hmm. And she'll just go in on her own. Mm -hmm. But I'm always going to give her the freedom to come out if she wants mm -hmm. and not force her because then she's going to be more likely to trust me and do it on her own. Okay. But is that just giving her the freedom to come out? Is that just in the getting her used to yes. the Because what, what if you really have to go somewhere? Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's just at first while we're getting her used to okay. it. So like now with my adult dogs, I, I'll just say, go to your crate. They'll go in on their own. I close the door, leave. So let's say it's tomorrow. So like she's still learning all this stuff and we have to go somewhere. I would spend a couple of minutes getting her in. And then at some point I would just shut the door. Yep. Okay. Yep. I would put her in with a toy and uh -huh. close the door okay. or give her something to chew on, something fun. Uh -huh. And then, um, and then the next step will be like, I would close the door, latch unlatch open okay uh-huh so this is basically shaping it so i take the act of putting her in the crate and uh -huh. i break it up into little teeny pieces mm -hmm. okay so would this be part of a training session yeah i would do this like five minutes okay twice a day yeah. but yeah this can be part of the training session as well uh -huh. so then i toss it a little bit farther so she's got to go in further And if she doesn't go all the way in and get it, that's fine. Okay. Like she backed out. So I'm going to like not go quite so far because I always want to go at her pace. Mm -hmm. Good girl. Okay. Yeah, sometimes I'll take Good her job. Like, a, like a chew thing and I'll just, I'll toss it in there. And she like knows what I'm doing and she'll like look at me and she'll go grab it and like sprint out. Yeah. <laughs> Smarty yeah so i would i would take like five minutes a day and just do this and okay. let her go in come out go in come out if we leave do you think we should put her in her crate or her pen area um i would put her in her crate okay. just so she gets used to it okay. Okay. um and and mainly because when she goes to the vet or goes to a groomer they're going to put her in a crate and so we want her to get used to being in a crate so she doesn't like panic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But when you're home and let's say you're home and you can't supervise her, mm -hmm. she should be fine. Yeah. Um, if she hasn't gone potty, I wouldn't let her have free reign of the house, uh -huh. but you could then put her in the X pen uh -huh. and kind of, you know, she's got her pee pad there. So yeah. just yeah. let her stay in there. Like yesterday I showered and the whole time I was showering, getting ready, it was probably like 30 minutes and I put her in her pen. And she barked the whole time, which, again, I'm fine with it being stressed me out or anything. But then today I showered, and I brought her in the bathroom with me and shut the door, and she barked the whole time there, too. And I'm like, I should have just had her in her pen for yeah. practice. Yeah. I think she doesn't like a door between me and her. Right. So and that's one of the things that we kind of want her to get used to. So, mm -hmm. so then you can, like, close the door, latch, count to five, unlatch, let her out. Okay. And then you can start... Like then walking away, coming back, mm -hmm. walking behind a wall, coming back. Mm -hmm. So then you gradually, oh, oh good, girl. good girl. So now that she's gone all the way in, I'm going to toss some treats back there to keep her in there. And then I'm going to close. Good girl. Find it. So you were noticing that she was ready and then just let her out. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Because awesome. I want to let her out when she's quiet before uh -huh. she starts to bark and whine. Okay. And then you can slowly start to build up that duration mm -hmm. that she's in here. Okay. Good job. And then, yeah, if you have to go somewhere, just calmly put her in. Mm -hmm. um, we always kind of, and I'm really guilty of not doing this because I love my dogs. I'm like, I'll yeah. be back soon. I'll yeah. miss you. <laughs> but you want to try to make it low key okay. so that the dogs don't get anxious. Like, and no yeah. And so then when you come home, it's like, put your stuff down and you're like running right over. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. And okay. I mean, I go let my dogs sit out and I'm, you know, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I miss you guys so much. Uh -huh. And then it just amps them up. Yeah. But when they're learning, we want it just to be really low key so that they don't get anxious when we leave or come back. Okay. And then when she's calm, you know, you come back, oh, hi, Winnie, let her out, yeah. then give her love, give her attention. Okay. So how long could she be left really peaceful? Um, um, not that we're like ever leave the house anymore, but. She could probably, an hour and a half to two hours. Okay. Just and because if we were going to be gone for like an hour, an hour or two hours, would we put her just in the pen area so she can come and go into like, or just in the crate? Yeah, you could do either. Okay. I, I would start getting her used to the crate every day, but mm -hmm. if you're going to be gone for like two hours, you could put her in the X pen part. Mm -hmm. Okay. What you got there? The main thing is we don't want to, we don't want her going potty in her crate. Uh -huh. Um, so if you're going to be gone a while, it'd be better to have her in the X pen where she has a potty pad. Okay. Because we don't want um, dogs to get used to peeing and pooping in their crate. And then they'll probably just start doing it. Yes, so because then it won't bother them to lay in it. So, okay. Good girl. <laughs>I'm not going to force her. I'm going to let her say, oh, I don't like that. I'm going to back away. I always play with her tail and I'll play with their bottom area just because, you know, they get a thermometer. Yeah, yeah. So I want them to get used to, you know, being handled back there, mm -hmm. handle all four paws. I also will take my finger and rub it over their teeth uh -huh. so that I can clean their teeth. Oh, okay. Good. Oh, good job. Do you have any tips on the eye boogies? Um, get her used to like a washcloth uh -huh. and first just let her sniff it. Um, and then just touch her with it, treat, touch, uh -huh. treat, and then like wipe a little bit, treat. Okay. I can get it, like if I get a warm washcloth, she'll let me put it on there, like if she's kind of chill, like right now. But then I can't, like I try and pick at it, I can't get it. Yeah. Um, I mean, she hasn't ever been groomed yet, so maybe. Yeah, she'll, she'll and she'll get used to it. And you can even just like, you know, handle her face and mm -hmm. you can even like tr just do it with your finger. Uh-huh. Like she's being really good about it yeah. and letting me do that. Oh, good yeah. girl. <laughs> and then you always want to pair it with treats. So... Because dogs learn by association, uh -huh. so we always want them to learn like um, novel sounds equal treats, being handled equal treats, okay. strange people equals treats. Uh -huh. So they look forward to those kind of yep. things. Okay, so let me grab my phone and I will show you how to do a sound. Yeah, she. I'm not kidding. She will sleep good today. Really. Okay, um, so you can get um, free apps. Mm -hmm. You can use YouTube. I use YouTube a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I worked with a dog that was really aggressive towards skateboards. Oh. And like he would chase them down and bite whoever was riding them. Really? So first we just got him used to the sound uh -huh. of the skateboard and we used YouTube. Mm -hmm. But I like to at least do fireworks and thunder. Um, she's been kind of funny around winds too. Oh, okay. Like yesterday, I think it was pretty windy and we can, 
hear like a little bit of like, mm, you know, kind of. Yeah. So whenever you hear something like that, mm -hmm. um, you can pair it with treats. And okay. then when the wind stops, the treats stop. Okay. So again, it's that association game. Uh -huh. So I'm going to start at a low volume. Winnie. Look, what do I have? <gasps> Good girl. Good girl. Oops, I have to take it off. <laughs> it's on mute. And she handled that just fine. Yeah, so now yeah. I'm going to turn it up one notch. If she, if she acted afraid of it, I would back off. Okay. She's like not even noticing. Yeah, she doesn't even care. Yeah. <laughs> so let's do a different fireworks like, sound. The fireworks. I always like to do thunder and fireworks, especially where I live, because the whole month of July is rodeo season oh, where okay, I live. Yeah. So there's fireworks every night. And then when the sound stops, the treats stop. Uh -huh. And she is getting tired. But this this is basically what you do. We can yeah. go. We can do this again, like another session. Okay. Um, but I would do it with um, thunder, wind. Mm -hmm. So if it is windy, you can be like, oh, it's wind, treat, treat, treat. And then when the wind stops, the treats stop. Okay. Um, and then like a vacuum, I would show her a vacuum. So like, let's say this is the vacuum. Uh -huh. You can just show it to her treat and then take a treat closer to it have it not move uh -huh. and in it. yep and then um then we're gonna have the vacuum just go on off So the whole time it's on, I'm going to be treating. Mm -hmm. And then when the sound stops, treats stop. Okay. And then you can take well, the... Get to the point where, like, if you get out the vacuum, they get excited because they want treats? Yeah, or they'll just, they just get used to it. Yeah. So then they won't bark at it, try to bite it, things like that. Right, okay. And then you could take the vacuum and just, like, move it without turning it on. Oh, good. And she just looks at it. You can give her treats. Mm -hmm. So you can do that with garbage cans, brooms, vacuums. Anything that might kind of freak her out. Yep. Anything new and novel, okay. we want to socialize her to that. Different floor surfaces, so carpet, grass, tile. Yeah, the first day we got her, she sat at the carpet line and then like inched around at the tile and like backed off. Something yeah. Like <laughs> yep, and some dogs have issues with thresholds, like going from one room to the next. So I'll take a little um, trail of treats and just like do a trail through the, or you could do like from carpet to tile. Mm -hmm. And just do a trail of treats so she's following the treats onto the, okay. the new floor surface. So this week, what you're going to work on with Winnie is the name game. Okay. And then rewarding her when she focuses on you, when she looks at you on her own. And then practice the watch me. Okay. And then you're going to do the sit and the touch, the hand targeting. Okay. And then try to do a little bit of socialization um every day just mm -hmm. even if it's body handling or sound desensitization something like that okay. and then some kind of enrichment like a stuffed kong um a, a snuffle mount would be great mm -hmm. so do some of this mm -hmm. um also puppies and dogs are most active sunrise and sunset oh interesting i've noticed that <laughs> so if they get the zoomies first thing in the morning or at night, uh -huh. um, you can always redirect them to something like the snuffle mat because this will tire her out. Are the zoomies like bad? We think it's no. fun. Okay. No, it's totally fine. Yeah, that's when we're like, yeah, we get on the floor and yep. messing around with her. Okay. Yep, they're totally fine. But yeah, I would do some kind of nose work with her every day just okay. so she gets that mental enrichment as okay. well and the problem solving. Okay. So you said stuffed Kong. I have a little Kong for her. What do I stuff her with? So you can use peanut butter, pumpkin... Um, oh, I, okay, yeah, and I usually will mix a little bit of kibble. Um, you can actually cut up carrots and broccoli Oh, okay. because it's good for them and yeah. they like it. And I cut that up and mix it all together and stuff it and freeze it. Okay. So that's a good thing to give her like in the crate mm -hmm. or if you have to leave because if it's frozen, it's going to take her longer to eat the insides out. Mm -hmm. So even at her size, she'll be, I mean, it's a small pond. Yeah. Um, She's just going to lick the insides yeah, out and okay. chew on it and stuff. So yeah. cool. Yep.
Awesome. I think I think we are set for a week. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Today. You guys did great. She did so good. Good girl. And as you're following along in these episodes, make sure that you check out the episode details for important links to handouts, articles, and other really important things that will help you on this puppy training journey.